Let's take a look at seven simple things that you can do to help make your models user friendly. So imagine that you are getting this model for the first time. You can tell by looking at it in the graphics area, it's pretty complicated. And then you look over to the model tree and it provides very little help. So the first thing that you can do to help make a model user friendly is rename different entities. For example, if I select this protrusion over here, oh, okay, now I can see that that is the base for mounting the component. So why don't we call it base mounting? And let's see the next one over here. Okay, that's the housing for the differential. Let's rename it. Differential housing. And that way, the next person who gets this will look at the model tree and start to get some insight into the design intent. Along with renaming the different features, here we have some data sharing features over here. And right now, they're just named with the default name, external copy geom. I highly recommend that you use information reference viewer to figure out what model that is referencing and rename the copy geometry feature with the name of the model that's being referenced because sometimes what will happen is you'll not only have missing references listed in there but sometimes it'll say missing model and you won't even know what the name of the model was and so by renaming it with the, with the name of the model that'll help you out so for example i can call this one i like ecg for external copy geometry features and i think that was 51 thousand dash scale and that way someone will take a look at it and hopefully they'll know my shorthand ECG for external copy geometry and they can tell the name of the model that it was based off of and if there's ever any kind of broken links they'll know that they can go back to this model in order to reestablish some dependencies and along with rename your features and your data sharing features rename your cross section so for example if i scroll all the way down here we have a cross section a and then this one with the default name hey let's go ahead and just rename it to b just so that it's the same name as we would use in a drawing just have those things match up the second thing that you can do to make your model user friendly is group related features together. So for example, I see that there are a bunch of different rounds in here and they take up space in the model tree. And to consolidate them, you can select a bunch of features. And from the mini toolbar, there is a group command. And when you create a local group, please rename it. So for example, I'm gonna call this fillets. Uh, because it's a bunch of fillets. Uh, so again, by creating these different local groups and naming them logically, it'll help someone navigate the model tree. Because again, right now there are a ton of different features in here. Along the same lines, the third thing that you can do is that you can create different annotation features that are empty and use them as markers. And so let's say that I happen to know right around here is where all my different finishing features start. Uh, for example, things like my rounds and chamfers and other different things like that. What I can do is I can right click at a location and choose insert here. And then I can create a new annotation feature. I'll go to the annotate tab and choose annotation feature. And then you can change the name of it to something as a marker so for example I'm gonna call this finishing features and click the OK button and now by doing that I've created an empty annotation feature let me exit out of insert mode and when this feature appears in here and someone is looking through there, it's sort of just a, 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 a signpost, a flag to them. Oh, at this point in my model tree, this is where my finishing features are starting. Uh, and sometimes what I'll see people do is that they'll use two or three of these in here just to make it a little more obvious. But again, a nice way of denoting things in the model tree. 
All right, next tip deals with modeling. And so sometimes I'll pull open a model and they'll just have a ton of different datum features, especially a lot of different datum planes and axes and stuff like that. And that's perfectly fine. Datum features are meant to help you create solid geometry. But one thing that you can do to reduce clutter is embed datums, especially if the datums are only going to be used for one other feature. For example, let me turn on my datum plane visibility. And let's say that I needed to create some new mounting pad and I needed it down over here and I needed to create a plane for the sketch plane. But if I know that the extrude that I'm making is going to use only that datum plane and no other features are going to use it, create the datum plane inside of the feature. So for example, if I am creating my extrude, now I have the ribbon open. If you go to the far side of the ribbon, you have a datum group. And from here, I can create a datum plane. And I will select the reference that I'm using. And I'm just going to drag it off of some distance here. Uh, the actual value is not important for the sake of this demonstration. And you can rename it. So for example, this is my mount sketch plane. I'm using a little abbreviation there and click the OK button. And now when I resume my dashboard, it automatically takes me into sketch mode and that new plane that I'm, I created is being used as my sketch plane. And now I can create my geometry. And in this case over here, uh, I'm just going to sketch in a rectangle. Hit the check mark. And then for my depth, I can right click on here and choose to next. And yes, I chose a very heavy model to be working in. Uh, but I hit my check mark. Here we have our extrude. If I expand it, you can see that we have the section within the extrude and there is the datum plane that was created inside of the feature. So embedded datums, really great use if you have an object like a datum plane or datum axis that is that's only going to be used for one particular feature. All right, the next two methods of reducing or making your model user friendly uh, are related to one another. So for example, I'm going to turn off my datum plane visibility. If I go to my model intent overflow menu and then choose relations, I can see that this particular model has two different relations in it. And by taking a look at you know, it's this dimension is equal to 360 divided by D676. I can tell that's actually related to a pattern. And two things that you can do is that first off, Write comments in your relations dialog box in order to make them a little more obvious as to what they control. Whatever. Uh, and so I'm going to start off with a forward slash and an asterisk. And I'm going to explain what this does. And it controls the number of instances in a pattern or pattern dimensions or whatever it's doing. And the other thing that you should do is use liberal use of spaces. I can see that there are no spaces in between anything in here. Just makes it really hard to read. Just by putting in a few more spaces, it just starts to make it a little more functional. And because this is, you know, D649 is equal to 360 divided by P650, I can tell by the nature of this that it probably controls uh, some circular patterns in here. And so along with changing the names, or excuse me, in addition to adding comments in here, you should change the names of your dimensions because it's never intuitive in terms of what D70 controls or D678. And so, for example, if I go to the model over here, I can see that we have a circular pattern of holes here. I can see, let's see, is it that one? No, is it that one? 
I'm just, oh, okay, here, this one. I'm going to go to the edit dimensions command. And so this is going to show me the different dimensions associated with the feature. And in this particular case, it's showing me the numerical values of those dimensions. So for example, we have 60 degrees and we have six holes. If you go to the tools tab and then choose switch dimensions, it will toggle the dimensions between their numeric form and their symbolic form. And then if you click on a dimension in Creo 4.0 and later, it's going to bring open the dimensions tab in here. In this case here, here we have P650. In this field, I can edit this value. And this P650 dimension allows me to control the number of instances in the pattern. So for simplicity, I'm just going to call this pattern instances. In reality, I would, oops, let's use an underscore instead of a dash. I would use a better name from that, but I just want to illustrate how you can do this. And when you change the names of these different dimensions and then go back to your relations dialog box, you'll notice that here we have that rename dimension is automatically updated in here. So again, as you update different names, it's going to update in the relations dialog box as necessary. So again, rename your different dimensions and write comments in your relations and use a lot of spaces. And the very last technique that I'm going to show you, I'm going to pull open a model that a friend of mine named Dan gave to me. Uh, he created this general start part for creating different gears and it's very automated. It's driven by a number of different dimensions and relations and to help facilitate someone understanding the model and the different values that were used in here, he created a flattened screen annotation with various information. And you should take advantage of this. Now, personally, I would not create it on the default all combination state. What I recommend that you do is if you go to the annotate tab, then you can choose flat to screen, oh, excuse me, before that, create a new combination state and I'm going to rename this one and this might be um, might call it my mo modeling notes and then I could create my different annotations in here you could choose flat to screen and then go to the note and then drop it on the screen and type in the text that you want to have so for example this model helps create different gears. Put in other information about the different steps that you take or maybe the inputs that someone has or what are the important controlling dimensions. Or like my friend Dan did, he created this note here that lists all the different dimensional values in the model so someone can see them at a glance. So again, Seven little tips for making models user-friendly. I highly recommend that you incorporate some or all of these. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.